of SK Gaming for an inside look at their match. Thank you very much, Quickshot. I'm joined by SK Support and rated after that five dragon game over Meet Your Makers. Congratulations, Chris, first off. Um, tell me about the beginning of the game and the level of aggressiveness. Was that the champion combo or was that your inherent aggressiveness you've got with Forgiven now? Uh, I think we just managed to pick a comp we felt really comfortable with and that's just kind of what we played out. Um, we're playing on a level where we both feel like we can aggress people and get advantage with it. and. As long as we play that out properly and have a controlled aggression, I think that we can gain a lot of advantages with that on bot lane. Yeah, going back to the to the early level, look, like one, two, and three trading on bot lane, we did. We should see, or we could see, every time you guys traded, you guys traded together. It was always two against one, mostly on Mr. Rawas, and it felt like MYM's bot lane was kind of like discreetly, like they weren't trading together. At one point, Nisbeth would walk up, start shield trading alone, then Rawas got caught. Is that a way you guys perceived the game as well? Did it feel like you were more in sync? And, and why do you think that is? How did you train to get so in sync with Forgiven? I think um, we're just kind of on the same page right now when it comes to playing bot lane. I think we have the right playstyle and mm -hmm. mindset coming together. Um, they were not really in sync and we felt like as soon as you see uh, them committing a mistake, you can just punish it. Yeah. So you see, for example, Jenna shield trading, so you just simply swap to Severe and Severe is kind of vulnerable to everything then. So you just kind of play out the advantages you have and the more advantages you get, the easier it gets. The easier yeah. it gets. And then translating that into like a team style, we saw SK play bot lanes winning and pushing. Mid lanes level two, uh, Cassiopeia hit early, he started trading, he started pushing. Top lane, Freddy was pushing. Is this like just a matchup specific style or is it just like SK plays all the time like this? Because you push all lanes, have Fred, uh, have Svenskren play aggressive against that and even against the Lee Sin jungle, which so to me sounds like really dangerous. As long as we, are c we can aggress, I feel like we are in the position to control the game and the pass of the game. It's just like as if Sven is able to invade and see where that jungle is and all three lanes are really aggressive, we're just gaining and gaining and gaining. So they are kind of on their back foot and they need to make a play to come back just from the start of the game basically and that's where you want to be. Uh, they actually did manage to come back for just a brief moment. How come you lost control there for just a second? You did regain it right after. Well, we were kind of predicting the top lane gank, but we still kind of misplayed it and just failed in a 2-on-2 two two there. But that can happen and it just it, we just came back from it because we were just standing as a team and we felt like we were just taking the right fight at the right moment. As long as we took Drakes, we were in the driver's seat. We didn't have any pressure onto us and just slowly but surely we gained advantage by that. Yeah, it did feel like SK was in complete control of this game. And we actually have two replays. If we can get the first replay on the screen right now, there's a couple of things we want to show you there. Um, so basically before we roll the clip, what I want to highlight here is like the bottom wave and the top lane. At one point, that this if you remember in the game, the top lane was stacking really slowly and MOM was bleeding farm and that top lane wasn't going anywhere. But it, then again, your, your bot lane was shoving and it hit the exact same time on the tier two tower uh, when Dragon was supposed to spawn. Is this like slightly luck or is this actually the team really working together to get those side lanes in the right positions? We're actually working on side lane control, so this was a part of our plan going for Drake. The problem was that they claimed vision on Baron, which kind of like threw us off guard and Gnar co coming out of the brush kind of made us feel like they might be on Baron. So I had to somewhat face check into this position and they just collapsed on me with Severo. Yeah, we can roll the clip and then we see exactly what uh, Enraded actually predicted for us. So they, they definitely caught you guys off guard, but at the same time you got your fourth dragon. So even if this would backfire, it would be a little bad. Uh, were you worried here, Chris? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was worried. Some more kills for them could have actually made a difference there. Scumbag Crepo choosing a clip that Enraded dies nah, first. No, no, no. We got the glory clip coming up. The yeah, second we replay. Do. <laughs> this is where Chris can shine and he'll guide us through that. Uh, let's get that on your screen right away. This is the fifth dragon for SK and this is basically where the game uh, ends. And yeah, just if we can roll the clip, wh wh what's happening? Guide us through it. So we knew uh, Freddy was flanking from, from top. So Jenna would kick him out, but they just collapsed onto us and we just kind of AOE'd them down. On top of that, the Lulu ult just made it really hard for them to to just fight there next to the pit and they had this uh, incredible force of the fifth drake coming in so we just got the drake got the fight and that was the game yeah and freddy freddy was basically keeping two people busy there the ad carrying support was that communicator or do you guys just know he's going to do that in the well fight? we kind of forced the fight onto drake because we knew freddy could flank so we were waiting for uh, an opportunity for to freddy just to come in and since they didn't come in before we just forced them in by starting drake and in the end, they had to commit and we forced them into a position where they couldn't possibly win a fight. Yeah, 2-0 and here in your opening uh, week for the LCS with the new uh, player in their rank. So I guess that's a pretty good result. Well, there's a lot of things we noticed that are obviously better about your lineup, seeing how you're so dominating in lane four. Is there something that doesn't uh, immediately meet the eye that you think that is going a lot better now in the team? 
I think like overall, um, I think the place that we're playing right now is more beneficial for us. The laning phases don't seem to be like a weak point or a point where we're struggling. I think everything is more like controlled in a way. Um, before it was like if we hit mid game, we could control the pace of the game. Now it's like if as soon as we hit the get the lanes we want, it's basically already on our side, and the enemy needs to make a lot of plays to come back from that. I feel like everything is going for us, and the only thing we need to do is build up a bit more synergy, communicate a bit better, and I think everything is going our way. And to buy some more wards. Yeah. Maybe like that. Um, <laughs> That depends. I think it all it all depends on the playstyle and the way you have to play. And right now it's going good, so let's just keep up like that. <laughs> yeah, Keith, you had a fantastic result here in your very first two LCS games. Congratulations, and rated Thanks Thank for much. joining us. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be back in three and a half as Giants Gaming take on the Copenhagen Wolves. Don't go anywhere. Time to kick off the day as Meet Your Makers will be taking on SK Gaming. Yeah. It looks like Freddy is gonna go for a fight. Eganar. Mimer, he hops, he crunches. Glacial Tombs out, Cataclysm's down. Everybody's involved. Nice setup. Dragon's Rage kick goes backwards. See what Mimer can do in the mid lane. That's a stun for TV Fox. coming. 3v1, Exhaust is down. Fox gets knocked up by the Wild Growth. He's still alive before finally getting taken down. Wild Growth goes up and Rage is the first victim of the fight. Mimer's about to go Mega Nar. He does crunch down. Look at the Cataclysm in the background. Svenski and gets booted to safety. SK has Dragon number five. We do see Blizzy everyone dies. Blown up. He's dropped down. Cataclysm locks everyone up, but it does not matter. SK are cleaning house.